Good afternoon. Welcome to this celebration of Eucharist on the fifth Sunday of Easter. The parish office will be closed this Tuesday. The Knights of Columbus Food Drive is this weekend. Needed items and drop-off locations are listed in the bulletin. All the songs and responses for today's Mass are found in your program. Please join fully in the spoken and sung prayers. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Dave. Please take a moment to silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Let us raise our voices in praise of our God, who invites us to this sacrament of love as we sing the gathering song, Gather the People. Good afternoon. And I'd like to welcome you to our celebration of Holy Eucharist for our first communicants today. I'd like to welcome them along with their families and friends who gather with us today. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And since we're still in the Easter season, we'll continue with our sprinkling rite, and our response to each petition will be, Blessed be God. Praise to you, Almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Blessed be God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offered yourself on the cross, that in the blood and water flowing from your side, and through your death and resurrection, the church might be born. Blessed be God. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan, that we might all be baptized in you. Blessed be God. You have called your children to this cleansing water, that they may share in the faith of your church and have eternal life. By the mystery of this consecrated water, Lead us to a new and spiritual birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Shower us with godliness and bathe us in your love. 
and breathe us in your light. Chosen people, royal priesthood, heaven's pride and glory, gathered here to celebrate the wedding feast of Christ. Blessed Savior, pour upon us living streams of water. Shower us with godliness and bathe us in your light. Chosen people, royal priesthood, heaven's pride and glory, gathered here to Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the paschal mystery within us that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit, and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews, 
because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, select among you seven reputable men, filled with the spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to do this task. Whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicoran, Timon, Parmethus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul, Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble 
by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, If I have been with you so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is certainly a special day. And when we do something special, especially for the first time, we usually prepare ourselves. We get dressed up for it. And I must say, the girls look very beautiful today in their white dresses and veils. The guys look very handsome in their suits and ties. Because we are celebrating something special today. And what are we celebrating today? What are we celebrating today? First, Holy Communion. And that is special. I bet a lot of people here today remember their first communion day. I know, I know, remember mine. It was quite special to this very day. And who are you receiving today in First Communion? You're receiving God. You're receiving Jesus. Receiving Jesus, who is God. Now, sometimes we make our religion, our faith, very complicated. But it really isn't. When we look at it, I think it comes down to one word, 
perhaps united to two others. The word itself is love. We go to the Bible, we're told something very simple but very profound. God is love. God is love. If we're looking for a definition of love, the answer is God. Now the beautiful thing about the entire Bible It shows that God wants to connect to us the ones he loves. God loves us so much that he went to great lengths to bring us all together in this spirit of love and ultimately to be with him in heaven. That's what God wants. Very simple. And so God, in order for us to understand that, sent his son Jesus into the world. When you look at Jesus, Jesus is love made visible to us by the Father. We look at Jesus, what he did, how he lived, it gives us a good example of what love is and how we are to live our lives. Now, what was that supper? You remember that supper that Jesus celebrated with his apostles the night before he died? Does anybody know what that name was given to that supper? The Last Supper. Very good. The Last Supper. And it was there that Jesus gathered with his apostles to share in this very special meal. When Jesus was preparing to celebrate that meal for him, he found a difficulty. He was faced with a problem. The problem was this. Jesus knew that the next day he was going to suffer, die, He knew he would rise on Easter Sunday, and he knew he had to return back to the Father. We celebrate that on Ascension Thursday. So Jesus knew he had to leave. But his love for his apostles, for you and me, was such that he wanted to stay. Now Jesus had a dilemma. How can I leave, and yet how can I stay? Well, Jesus did leave physically because he had to be obedient to the Father. As the gospel told us, he had to go, for one of the reasons, to prepare a place for us so that he would come and take us to be with him. He wants us to be in heaven, right? But he also wanted us to see, he also wanted to stay. And so he gives to us this beautiful miracle, the Eucharist. Jesus does stay. He stays with us in that Eucharist. That body and blood, that precious gift that he gives to us. He gave to us a miracle, a miracle that we still celebrate today, a miracle that will take place at this Mass. When I pray those prayers of consecration, we know that that bread and wine which is here now, the miracle will take place, and that will become Jesus Christ. Love made visible for us in the Eucharist. And when we receive Jesus, we receive Jesus into our hearts. It's as if Jesus' heart is touching our hearts in a beautiful way. The divine heart of Jesus is touching your heart. That's an amazing thing. God fills us with his presence, fills us with his love. Jesus wanted to be with us. Think of some of the people that you love. Think of some of the friends that you have. When we get together with our friends, we want to be with them. We want to spend time with them. We want to do things with them. What are some of the things you do with your friends when you get together? What are some of the things you enjoy doing? Play tag. Get out and play a game of tag. You want to be kind with your friends. But what are some of the things you do with your friends, activities that you do with them? Go outside and play. That's a great thing to do. Anything else? What else do you like to do with your friends? (laughs) Eat snacks and play tag. (laughs) Eating's always a good thing. Talk. Be with them. Notice some of the things you said are what Jesus does with us. He wants to be with us. He talks to us in the scriptures. We just heard them. He's speaking to us. We like to eat. Jesus comes to share this meal with us, this special food. 
So notice, Jesus, out of his love, gathers with us to do those things that we enjoy doing with each other. Being with each other, talking with each other, sharing in a meal with each other. Notice, however, that when our hearts are touched with Jesus in the Eucharist, we have this beautiful encounter with love. Love demands that we love others. That's what Jesus did. He showed his love by doing all those miracles, helping those who were sick, raising people from the dead, feeding those who were with the loaves and the fish. He showed kindness to others. Jesus wants us to do that as well to share his love with us. That's why it's important for us that we encounter Jesus in the Eucharist often and frequently so we can grow in that love, grow in our relationship with him, simply be with him. We need that food then, that Eucharist, which is food, to help us do that. Now, You eat food. How many times have your parents told you, don't eat junk food? How many times have you heard that? We've all heard that. How many times have they told you to eat your vegetables? How many times have you heard that? What are some of your favorite foods? What are some of your favorite foods? Noodles. Okay. Bananas. That's a healthy one. Apples. That's one of my favorites. Tacos. Yes. Wings. Oranges. Oh, I'm sorry. Strawberries. We've got some healthy people here eating all this good food. I have to learn from you. I don't always eat that healthy food. But the thing is, we need to eat healthy food so that you go strong and healthy and be able to function at your best. Well, that's why we need to eat the Eucharist to eat this body and blood of Jesus Christ so that we can grow spiritually, so that we can do the things that Jesus calls us to do. And that is to share our love. Share our love with God. Today you're going to have this beautiful encounter with Jesus Christ. Jesus will be present through that miracle. He's going to come into your very hearts. Your heart is going to touch the heart of Jesus. And being filled with his presence then, he calls us to grow in that love and to share it. We need to leave here today after we encounter our Lord in the Eucharist, each and every Mass, to go and make Jesus present in the world, his love present in the world. And that's an awesome calling, that God wants us to participate in his work of making his love visible in the world. And so we do that by receiving the Eucharist frequently, often, and in encountering our Jesus, our Lord, who loves you so much, to share that love with others. What a beautiful thing it is today. I just want to talk to your parents now for a moment here. I'll get back to you. I want to thank you, because a little bit of time ago, You brought these children to get baptized. You stood before the church, you stood before God, and you made a promise. You promised to raise these children in the ways of faith, to begin this journey of faith with them, to bring them to the altar to receive Holy Communion. You brought them to the confessional to encounter our Lord, His mercy in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. And I want to commend you for that. Continue the good work that you have begun because it is still a journey. We still have confirmation. When we look at the Eucharist, it's certainly not an end of things. It's just the beginning of this spiritual journey of life and love. And we need to continue that. Continue to share your faith with them. Bring them to the altar so that they can receive the Lord who loves them so much in this special Eucharist to fill them with his life, his grace, and holiness. Let's bring them then to confirmation, to be filled with the Spirit, so that being become fully initiated members of the church, they can go out and truly give witness to Jesus Christ in a world that is so desperate for that image and presence of Christ today. 
So I want to thank you for which you have God begun offering our help in the future. If there's anything else we can do to help in this journey, we're certainly here for you. And together, as church, as a family, to journey to that eternal kingdom. As Jesus said in our Gospel, He's gone to prepare a place for us so that where He is, we all may, we all may be. What an awesome thing that is. And also, I'd like to thank all those who helped prepare our students for today. I'd like to thank Mrs. Robayton, who is head of our sacramental prep program here. I'd like to thank the teachers and catechists, both in our religious ed program here in the parish, as well as the teachers and catechists at Divine Mercy Catholic Academy, for all your hard work and efforts as well. It's such a pleasure to see these young people here today prepared so beautifully to receive their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the beautiful sacrament of Holy Eucharist. Congratulations today, and God bless you on your journey. Our profession of faith, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord exhorts us to not let our hearts be troubled. So in confidence, we offer our prayers for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Please respond, Risen Savior, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Mark, and all clergy and religious, may they bear the fruit of righteousness as they proclaim Christ crucified and risen. We pray. Risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. For our president and government leaders, may they strive to ensure peace and justice through respect for life, defense of the oppressed, and care for the poor. We pray. Risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those receiving First Communion today, may they grow in wisdom and charity at the table of the Eucharist, we pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. For peace among neighbors, tribes, and nations, for the people of Ukraine, and the welfare of all people who are engulfed by war and violence, we pray. Risen, Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, homebound and hospitalized for Patty Krupa, Mary Lou Walker, Barb Mihalik, Kelly Lucas, Tony Moran, Laura, and all those named in our Bible, Fullerton, and for all who need the Lord's peace and healing, we pray. Risen, Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all the faithful departed, Dorothy Catcher, Michael Kozak, Mary Ann Donate, Arlene Eck, Beth Cusbel, Scott Niesner, for whom we offer this Eucharist, we pray. Risen, Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, for our intentions, and for all those written in our parish book and website, we pray. Risen, Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sweetest Jesus, our Lord, truly present in the Eucharist, be our health in mind and body. Be our strength in all temptation. Be our joy and peace in every trial. Be our light and guide in every deed. And be our final protection in the hour of death. God of love, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and give us generous hearts so that we may love each other as your Son has loved us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. And so we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink the blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullness of charity. Together it fancies our folk and mark our Jesus and all that love Jesus. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Of mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, King Joseph, and husband, with the blessed apostles, Saint Benedict, <coughs> and all the saints who have preached to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory, Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Father, thank you. Peace be with you guys.
together some more yet. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have endued with heavenly mysteries to mass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. And let us congratulate our first communicants on their first communion day. They did certainly did a wonderful job. We're very proud of you today. So thank you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Yeah.